fruit fight to eat. Say necessity. Free. Full graciousness. Free. Free. Was that anyway? Who said that before? During the mid-90s, the landscape of fighting games would change into drastically as it shifts to different 2D based sprites, 2-3D polygonal based fighters, which popular trends started with the right to prominence of veteran fighter, but it wouldn't be long until the likes of Tekken, Dead or Alive, Bloody Rock, and Soul Blade would to find a huge appreciative audience. And one would expect it would only be a matter of time until the biggest fighting game franchise of the early 90s would also jump into the realm of polygons. Street Fighter X yes. developed by Attica would arrive at the party in December 1996. Still by that point, it would fail impress with its metaphorically drifting amongst a large sea of polygonal fighters. Really? This is no Street Fighter 2. However, despite it standing out even close to what had come before it, the game still had a special share of fans for bringing the world of Street Fighter to the next dimension. And it even had some fantastic new characters too, such as Skullamania. I mean, who doesn't love Skullamania? All this was possible due to the awesome graphical capabilities that Sony's hardware brought to the table. So, holding such thoughts in mind, how and why is there a Street Fighter EX game available to play on the much more rudimentary Super Nintendo? Let's find out. I am Lady Decade, and this is the illegal Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha for the Super Nintendo. A massive thank you to everyone who has hit that subscribe button recently. Apart from the fact that it blows me away that you like my content enough to do in the first place, it has helped me so much in ensuring that these videos are suggested to more new people. Subscribing to this channel or even better than that, supporting the show on Patreon means that I can afford more silly costumes like the Chun-Li one today. So thanks to all of you, I can actually have a nice Shirini costume on its way in the post. So subscribe to learn about the illegal king of fighters soon. Yes. I illegal video games are just wonderful. You've got to have the range of oddities out there that have come from unlicensed sources. Regarding the gaming, few franchises in existence have been dubiously profited from quite as much as part of Street Fighter. Ever since the smashing success of Street Fighter 2 in 1991, bootleggers from China and Taiwan, much like Capcom themselves, have repeatedly returned to the Street Fighter world for more profit. One of the earliest and most famous examples of this was, of course, the arcade run hack that is a colloquially known as Rainbow Edition. This illegal Street Fighter 2 iteration introduced the ability to throw multiple fireballs on screen and get you switch who you were playing as mid fight. In fact, one element the game introduced in the increased play speed would unfold to be so appealing that Capcom would introduce such a feature in the official next iteration of the game. Turbine Hyper Fighting. So these big bugs sometimes make a significant impact. Hummer Team, who we have talked about on this channel a lot, with a range of unlicensed Street Fighter games to the NES. Today we will focus on an illegal Street Fighter game available for the next generation of Super Nintendo hardware. But so how on earth were the team at making a conversion Street Fighter EX to run on the Super Nintendo and be able to pull up such a feat? Well, the answer is not particularly well. The game features a title screen that prominently displays the Street Fighter EX Plus A logo, a name and logo shared with the same PlayStation port of Street Fighter EX, which featured a few extra bells and whistles the original arcade game lacked. As you can probably guess, and the Super Nintendo does not bring the same additions to the table. Arriving at the character select screen, you will notice that the final portraits have indeed been carried over from the X, and the character select background too has been crudely recreated. In the PlayStation version of the game, you will note that the bold, colourful backdrop will move to psychedelically. And, and to be fair, so does the Super Nintendo version, even if the two look a bit different. Another thing you'll notice from the off is that the game's rosters differ widely, with Romania and Hokuto being the only EX newcomers available in the SNES game. 
Boomer is available from the start to dispatch and being restricted due to the hitting hard to roll on the PlayStation. Something else odd is that he used to play as Detectives who you will face off against first in this game. game. With another character's portrait being highlighted in relation to the one you pick. Anyway, let's talk about the action. <laughs> Hilarity bounds, in fact. As you can see from this, the bootleggers with me no attempt to create a polygonal street fighter on the set of Nintendo, but instead create a dodgy sprite based off range that features a still background of a screenshot of the ones from the real Street Fighter EX. As a shame as a as this looks to be that the bootleggers, it is worth noting that when they chose to make this, they were not even the first team to take a polygonal fighting game and then cash in. in on its name value to the title carrying its name on weaker hardware. In fact, the Sega would unashamedly pull off such a stunt in 1994 when they released a dodgy cash grab version of the Pure Fighter 2 for the underpowered Sega Genesis. A game I might add that the Sega of Japan wanted to push so hard that they would altogether cancel Sega of America's successful Italian Champions franchise to ensure that it never stole the Sega Genesis and the Pure Fighter 2's thunder. As bad as Virtua Fighter 2 on Sega 16 bit hardware was, I must admit that Street Fighter to EX2 for Super Nintendo is even more abominable. So let's discuss this monstrosity deeper. After hearing the sparkling of that iconic versus green jingle from Street Fighter 2, you will instantly notice that all the music and sound effects of the game have been lifted directly from Street Fighter 2. Fortunately, features taken from the seminal classic and there. Combat-wise, you will notice that there are some similarities with Street Fighter 2. However, nothing looks or feels even close to its feel. Fruit. To make matters worse, much like an 8-bit game, the whole thing is experienced through no more than a simple two-button control scheme, with one button being next to kicks and another to punches. Some special moves are possible, which are executable through joystick motions paired but with the button traps. Super moves are also possible, but only when the super meter is full, providing at least something in this dull affair. This game may be s***, but you know what isn't. Subscribe to this channel. Oh, look me. Pathetic. As the Street Fighter EX for Super Nintendo, the control scheme and you feel familiar if you've played other boots like fighting games for the platform. That's because this one contains precisely the same fighting game engine as many others available for the hardware, including the dodgy x vs Street Fighter game we've looked at in the past. Specifically, but all these games have in common are that they contain audio ripped from Street Fighter 2 and feature combo systems without any grappling or throwing me. Like the game is made all the more rudimentary due to this game's weird hitboxes, poor hit detection, and horrible frame rates. For all of this, with the game's floaty jumps, animation is very smooth. Street Fighter X for Super Nintendo is a just as jerky as its fellow illegitimate family members. The fighting engine we speak of is said to have been created by the DVS Electronics Company based out of Taiwan. They are not credited to have made a Street Fighter EX. It is very likely that they are the outfit behind it. Some of the character sprites in this game look dodgier than others, with Gun in particular looking like he has been ordered from Wish. Unfortunately, Skullmania doesn't look much like Skullmania either, which is a shame as he never appeared in any official 2D Street Fighter games. And by some things, as the game's last boss, and when is defeated, you get a simple message saying, Congratulations, you are number one. Number one. <laughs> Thinking about it, I guess you would have to be able to put up a whip going through this. Undoubtedly, the official version of Street Fighter EX failed to make a big splash. These original based fighters are not imaginative enough for, for a world where the likes of the Tekken series were already thriving. On the other hand, uh, Street Fighter EX for the Super Nintendo does indeed an attempt to replicate what makes Street Fighter EX stand out from the Street Fighter games for it. This one is no more than a crash in the dress of it off a Street Fighter subfranchise that was not even particularly popular to begin with.
I guess the lead with this one comes from a what's the lead fight at the X which look like on 16 bit Nintendo hardware. Still disappointingly, all the batteries on offer here is an experience that is no different to many Super Nintendo fighting game bits. Rex. So, Street Fighter Rex. Rex. on the Super Nintendo, it's a big thumbs down from me. If you enjoyed this one, subscribing to the channel More. and supporting the show on Patreon will direct the portion of this show's profits to more More. fighting game cosplay. Which costume should I bring next? Melina, uh, Anna Williams, or Morrigan? Let me know in the comment section below. See you soon. <laughs>